Hey, what's up everyone? Brendan Lowe here from Jazz Piano School. Welcome to another podcast. This is gonna be episode number 163. Now your Jazz Piano School instructor is gonna be Sterling Koza for this episode, and he's going to be teaching you about the Lady Bird turnaround. So this is a really, really fun turnaround. You can use as a reharm at the end of tunes, and you might hear a soloist improvise over it. You might hear a bass player start to suggest it uh, at the end of a tune, or you could even suggest it once you start to learn it, right? So it's a really fun thing to be able to play these chords once you hear someone doing it and catch on to it, right? So you're gonna use it a lot. You hear it everywhere, very, very uh, popular. Sterling's gonna teach you all about this turnaround that's used in Lady Bird, was written in Lady Bird by Tad Dameron. So have a great time with this podcast episode, and let's dive right in. All right, hey everybody, welcome to this week's podcast. What you heard me just playing was the second half of the tune Lady Bird, written by Tad Dameron, a well-known composer and arranger. Now today we're talking about the Lady Bird turnaround, and this is a term that you'll hear thrown around in jazz quite often, and it's a way of going through the end of a tune and getting back to the top with some more interesting chord changes than you usually find. That's what we call a turnaround. It's those chord changes that get you back to the top of a tune. Now, Tad Damron, in his well-known tune Lady Bird, uh, came up with a set of chord changes that no one had ever really seen before and has influenced many players throughout uh, recent history, including Bill Evans, Oscar Peterson, and others. So today we're going to take a closer look at this turnaround and see exactly what's going on how he gets there, and what we can do with it. So, you heard me play the second half of the tune. Here's the whole tune, just so we know the melody. Now if we look a little closer at this turnaround at the end of the song, it begins on a C major chord. I'm playing sort of a 6-9 sound here, a big open chord. And then we go up to E flat. And the E flat then resolves down to its root, which is A flat major. Quite a colorful chord. Now that's taken us pretty far from the original key of C major. We went from this to this. Very colorful. Definitely ahead of his time, Tad Damron. And when we go from that A flat chord down to the D flat, this chord will take us back to our one chord. So again, we've got C, I'll play some smaller voicings now, C major. E flat 7, A flat major 7, and D flat 7. Now, a quick thing, you'll notice that when I voice these chords, I tend to keep the same note on top. And you can choose to do this or not, but I find that it tends to give this chord progression a little bit more continuity because it is so adventurous outside of the key. Now I'm choosing to use the common tone of G on my top of each of my chords. So that's one way to do it. See if you can come up with your own common tones or voice leading on top of those chords. Here's another way I might do it. So there's some different strategies that you can use to get through those chord changes in terms of chord voicings, which voicing to use. 
But um, there will be another podcast that will talk more about how to get through those chord voicings with uh, melody notes on top. But for now, let's go a little deeper into this chord progression. So how did Tad Damron come up with this chord progression? That's the question of the day, right? We're in C. How all of a sudden do we get to E flat? Well, the answer lies in a, in a much more simple, traditional place that you wouldn't quite expect. Now, when we talk about turnarounds, usually we're talking about something simple like a 2-5-1. Everybody's heard of the 2-5-1 progression, right? In the key of C, that'd be D minor, G7, C major. Now you can expand that chord progression to be a long, longer turnaround, and you can do something like this. Now what I did there was I went from a one to a six chord, A7, and the six chord resolves down to the two of D minor. Now where do we see that chord progression often? It's in a tune called I Got Rhythm. There's our one, six, two, five. That's a much more old school interpretation of that one. But um, that's our basic turnaround, you could call it, to get us back to the top of a tune. You'll see that in real books pretty often. Just a one, six, two, five, one. Or you could expand that to a three, six, two, five, one, which three in our key would be E minor. Okay, so. Tad Damron's taking it to the next level here. He's taking a traditional 3-6-2-5-1 or 1-6-2-5-1 progression, and he's choosing to throw in some substitutions. Now, we've talked about tritone substitutions in an earlier podcast. If you're looking for a refresher on that, you can go back through the archives and check that one out. Um, we're going to go ahead today and check out the tritone sub of a 3-6-2-5-1. So if we're starting on C, that's our one chord. What would we have next? We'd have a six chord usually, right? In this case, that'd be our A7. But what happens when we go a tritone away from that? There we have our E flat. There it is. So instead of going one, six, we're going one flat three or tritone sub of six. So that's the big shift there. And once you have that, it gets a little less crazy. We're just gonna go five to one in the key of A flat. So E flat is our five, A flat is our new one chord. So now we've ventured to this new destination of A flat. Interesting also because in the middle of the tune, he transposes to the key of A flat. Uh, there's that part of the melody where he's in the key of A flat. Interesting. Now we find ourselves in A flat again on the turnaround. E flat to A flat. And then to get back to the home key of C, you would usually expect a five chord, G7. But in this case, he chooses to go with another tritone sub, going down to D flat. And that takes us home to the key of C. So, all together we've got C, E flat, Tritone sub of six, A flat, and then tritone sub of five to one.
So that's a whole lot of theory. That's kind of the explanation of the turnaround itself. That's how we got there. Now, what do you do with that? Well, this is the fun part. You can come up with some fun voicings to use, and you can practice improvising over that new turnaround. Now, if I were improvising over that, uh, it would come at the end of the tune. So let's, let's take a chorus and check out what I do at the end of the tune. So at the end of that course, I chose to go with more of a bebop interpretation of those chord changes. I played through them something like... So you can go with more of a linear approach, or you can go with more of a patternistic approach. This is something you hear maybe John Coltrane play. Patterns over those chords might look something like this. Now all I did there was go one, two, three, five in each key. A flat, D flat, and then resolve it down. However you see fit. So in time, that could look like this. Notice how I utilize that pattern within the context of my solo to navigate those chord changes accurately. So that's kind of the triadic approach there if I was just focusing on the triads of each chord. So spend some time with these chord changes and see how you would go through improvising over them. Now, I'll give you one extra trick here. Remember earlier in the lesson how we talked about how you can go from a 1, 6, 2, 5 and change it into this new tritone substitution turnaround? Okay. Now, the same rules still apply. If you have an E flat, that's the flat 3, but you can also play the original 6 chord over it. It's very dissonant, but theoretically it works. So instead of playing C, E flat, A flat, D flat, you can play something more like C, A, and then D, G, or something a little safer would be C, A, a flat, G, C. That probably sounded like a lot of mush, but check out some of my improvising. Let's see if I can make it make sense. Um, I'll just loop this turnaround a little bit. That's a good way to practice it. So if our turnaround is...
So there's just a little experimentation with some tritone substitutions on that Ladybird turnaround from D Tad Damron. So uh, give that a shot and see what you come up with. Um, the cool thing about that turnaround is you can play it over more tunes than just Ladybird. If you've got a normal turnaround at the end of a rhythm changes, for example, you can throw that in and it'll sound pretty hip. So give it a try. All right. Well, happy practicing on that one. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the Tad Dameron Ladybird turnaround. Really, really fun stuff. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we release a new podcast episode every single Wednesday and a new Lick of the Week every single Monday, which you can tune into. And go to jazzpianoschool.com for a lot of more free education, uh, free blogs, free education, free transcriptions, a lot of great stuff there. All right, I'm your host as always, Brendan Lowe. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next podcast episode and happy practicing.